All right, and sitting down with us today, we've got former Div 1 wrestler at Purdue University, UFC welterweight and World Series of Fighting Champion with over 30 professional MMA victories to his name, Mr. John Fitch. John, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So recently you retired this past September. How nice is it to never have to do another weight cut again in your life? Man, that's pretty good. But I'm, I've, for the first time, I've been able to put on size and not worry about my weight. So I've been trying to beef up a little bit. I've been lifting more, eating a little bit more. Um, but I don't want to get like chubby big. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm about I'm walking around like one or two, uh, 218, 223. Yeah. Yeah. I hit 230 the other day though, but that was that was Easter and uh we had a lot of chocolate and stuff around. Yeah, yeah. So you're packing on a little bit of the COVID-15 and now you're getting back into the <laughs> rhythm of things there, right? Eh? Gotta start picking up the cardio. It's through, you know, because I'm uh I don't have to train the same that it mm -hmm. used to. So like you get so much cardio work and so much calorie burn just from the you know, you have so many workouts per day. Yeah, you know, now I'm I'm lifting uh you know six days a week, but they're short, short lifts. And, and now I'm finding, and that's pretty much all I do as I eat right and I, I lift, but then I find now that if I want to get like the, the, the dick abs, yeah. uh, you got to do cardio, yeah. you know, you got to do some high intensity cardio. So I have to like start introducing you some of that. I might actually put some, uh, I'm going to figure out which my best ones are. Cause I'm, I'm just doing it for shape and not performance now. So it's a little bit different. So I'm going to find some things that I, that I can uh, reliably count on to get me the dick ab shape, you know, yeah. without having to be like 25 minute fight ready <laughs> shape. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you have a, a go-to put, put some programs to get the guy like that would be cool. I think. Yeah. Do, do you have a go-to snack that you were never able to eat when you were in training that you've been uh, enjoying a little bit now? More well, that's, that's the thing when you're, when you're training that high a level, you, when, when the weekend comes and you eat your cheat meal, sometimes you can go a little bit, a little bit crazy. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the George Massavito playing, doing, you know, having his McDonald's or whatever. Yeah. These guys are expending so many calories per day. Like every once in a while, you know, they're eating junk food. It's not that big a deal. Yeah. Yeah. If they, if they cut the, uh, the calorie, the caloric expenditure down, that's a, that'll be a problem though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll get big fast. <laughs> exactly. The balloon up pretty quickly. So welterweight is 170 pounds. You just said normally you would sort of be walking around 210, 215 ish there. I would 210 was danger zone. Yeah. So, so like, uh, I would never. Yeah. If I was a 210, I was like, oh, I got I better. I got to I got to back off the gas. I got to, you know, get off the whatever I'm eating. I got to chill out a little bit, get back on the meal plan a little bit tighter because I don't want to be training in the gym too much over 200 mm -hmm. and the fight camps usually. 199 ish it's a pretty good sweet spot for most of the camp <laughs> yeah yeah well i was gonna say so at, at like how far out do you start your weight cut when you were training to fight because everyone sort of got their own method there were you one of the ones that was leaving it to the last minute and then just agonizing over it no, or? i had pretty good system and then i perfected the system when i uh 2016 i, I actually got a nutritionist and then i fixed i fixed the diet so i had everything set and then when I fixed the diet, the weight cuts became like super, I wouldn't say easy because you still have to do a lot of work, but yeah. uh, predictable, like science. Like it was like, I would, if I had this much, I knew I'd be this heavy and I would have this much to go the next day, whatever. Like it became like, you know, a relief because I knew exactly what I had to do to get where I needed to. Uh, I actually, I put all that in a book, uh, the Wake Up Bible. Mm -hmm. I've got that out on Amazon. So like, that has got my whole system on there, but you know, the biggest part of the weight cut is the training camp leading up to it and what you're eating. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it is the meal, the meal plan. Yeah. Okay. So doing your meal prep and doing your meal plan and eating the right stuff. That's, that's the most important thing. Cause, um, when you get down to fight time, you don't want to be carrying extra body fat, Yeah. you know, and if you can eliminate body fat, keep your lean muscle high, and then I give tips on how to cut that last bit of bit of water, last bit of water weight, and last bit of car. You know, the week of the fight, you start you start uh, cutting the carbs out, and uh, you know, start doing the weight cut stuff. So most of it is the diet, but um, yeah, I think the diet stays the same until about four to six weeks out, and then I might start reducing some of my protein. Mm -hmm. 
and I might, uh, and then, and then the white fight week is when I cut like carbs completely, but I have the full, I have the full program in my book. Yeah. Well, I was going to say your new book that just came out there, the weight cut Bible, it's available on Amazon. People can go check that out and grab themselves a copy, but if no you- one should ever miss weight again. Yeah, exactly. There you go. You've got the blueprint for him now. Should hand the, the commission should hand it to the fighter who misses weight. Yeah. No, they yeah. Never did. So when, when you are trying to shed those last couple pounds to finally make weight there, mm-hmm. like how much of that is actual water weight that you're trying to get out via the sauna or sweating it out versus, you know, stuff that you've already eliminated via diet and training. So like I get to fight week around in, new, in this new system i was getting to fight week around anywhere from 100 around 180 182 pounds mm-hmm. okay so I, I was losing 11 to 12 pounds of water weight fight week right um but because of the restriction on carbs mm-hmm. when you reintroduce carbs after the weigh-in you end up putting more weight on than you lost in the water weight yeah oh so I, I you know i show up on monday you know, high energy, feeling great, um, weighing 182 pounds. And then, you know, fight night, I'm like 186, 187, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in, in your opinion, at least some of these beefier fighters there who are just almost killing themselves to sort of make that weight when they do make the weight and then they balloon back up uh, on actual fight night and all that. Do you find that they have a significant advantage or do you think that because they're taking that weight cut to an even drastic, more drastic level, yeah, you, that they're a little bit trapped energy wise? Yeah. If you're, if you're dumping too much water, you're putting too much, too much on your body, too much expenditure on your body to do it yeah. in that short period of time. Cause I've, I've done some of those cuts long ago when you're, you're, you're mostly sweating the water out, mm-hmm. you know, short term. And that's a lot harder on you. It's a lot harder to recover and it's just going to hold you back. And I think there's, there's some issues with knockouts too, I think from dehydration and not recovering properly from the, from the, uh, from the weight cut. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's definitely not, it's not something you want to just cut. You know, I've seen, I've seen guys fit, cut 15 pounds, 17 pounds in the, just in the sauna and, you know, yeah. a few hours and uh, it's not a good site. And I don't think they ever really performed that well doing it that way yeah were, were there ever any fighters that whether you fought against or even just on the same card or anything where you're just looking at them going like i don't know hey, why anthony, the hell johnson, this anthony john rumble when he fought at 170 yeah we were, I think, in la um is that knockout or whatever i think that was the one but um yeah man he was a big guy and he uh-huh. was cutting he was one of those guys cutting like 15 pounds like that morning like yeah. was, he was 185 that like that morning and he had a you know that was when we weighed in at five o'clock so he had till five o'clock to lose that weight 15 pounds that's just yeah man i never had to lose that much that's that's an awful thing to do to yourself yeah and- especially because if you're not if you're not eating the right stuff anyways like you're carrying extra fat and then you probably have been eating shit that's it's yeah extra sodium or chemicals in it that that hold on to water also mm-hmm. you know it's just yeah Usually there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going wrong <laughs> before, the, before they're even doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And from a fighter's point of view, so when, a, when your opponent doesn't make weight, so let's say your fight against Tiago Alves, like what's going through your mind? Are you pissed at them for not making weight? Or are you more so like, well, thanks for a portion of your purse. Now let's get it on tonight. Like what's going through your head? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't really ever care, you know? Um because they're not, it's not much of an advantage. I mean, I, it, if they weighed in like six pounds over, that's a little mm-hmm. bit different, yeah. you know, because maybe, maybe they were, you know, not even planning on making the weight and coming in huge and whatever, but uh, yeah, I don't care because it's not going to be that much of a, a difference, you know, Hunter, if they, if they got 15 pounds, that's something, but like mm-hmm. six pounds, I'm not that worried about it. Um, yeah. Dennis, like Dennis Hallman called me the night before weigh-ins because he knew he wasn't going to make weight and he's like hey man you mind if we just move the weight to 185 instead he's like (laughs) he's like i don't want you to have to cut the weight and uh you know i need the money so i don't want to give up the purse money for missing weight and he's like because because i still had you know to get the purse money i'd still have to make weight so like (laughs) i had the decision i was like uh do i want to do i want to take his 2500 dollars because i think that's how much it was yeah 
he like that piece of the, his purse would have been like 2,500 bucks. So it was like cut weight or get 2,500 bucks. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. We'll fire 185. Yeah. And I called up, I called up the president and the guys, whatever, told him, called Ray. And then it's like, Hey man, we're just going to fight 185. We, it's cool. Yeah. I don't care. I don't want to cut weight and it's not worth, you know, uh, the, the, the $2,500 of his purse isn't worth it for me. So is it cool? So that he saved me. It was kind of nice. Thank you.